Okay. Snag that light. Doesn't How's work. it going, y'all? What? No, you broke it. Oh, oh no. <laughs> there we go. You just you just have to switch it the right way. So, <laughs> I think there's only one way. No, but you gotta mean it when you do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta switch it like you mean it. <laughs> what do we got in here? Han thirty. Hello, affordable desert living. What's up? Rancho Los Rosales, 13 Moons Homestead, how's it going? Hello. How's everyone doing tonight? How far are you from Walmart? <laughs> That's a good question. Not far enough. No. Ah, <laughs> someone doesn't like Walmart. <laughs> I'd say it's about a half hour trip. Half hour trip from the nearest to the nearest Walmart. Nature Patch. Hi. Nature Patch. Hello. Hi from Australia. Love your channel. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, Tracy. Ah, uh, so how are you doing tonight? I'm okay. I'm a little tired and sore. Yeah, what have we been up to? <laughs> What have we been up to? Why are, you, why are you so tired and sore? I've been playing in the mud all day. Yeah. Uh, I see you got that mud spot that was on your forehead. Oh, there's probably more. We are literally covered in dirt and mud. You hear a scratching sound that's crew that's crew getting comfortable on his on his couch what you doing there buddy <laughs> you comfortable yet that's one of the reasons why we have to have that bed there for him. It's not just for comfort, <laughs> but to protect the couch. <laughs> Geeky Gardens, hello. Doug and Ashley, how you doing? The Apricot Tiny House. Sherry, how's it going? Wayne says that dog is way too big for that trailer. Yeah. <laughs> He's uh that's yeah, it's basically it's almost his place. We have barely any room for us. Built on the Rock Homestead, how's it going? William, hello from Tennessee. Uh one <laughs> uh yeah, the like how much how many things is he towing up around here? Oh yeah. <laughs> Tan says I wonder if the couch has dog rattles too. Uh, I remember not too long after we were here, uh, some cows had gotten onto our property and I think the two of us like ran outside, we were like taking pictures of cows and things and crew was in here and he saw them and he was really upset. And when we came back inside, he had like, ripped the couch cushion off the couch and it, like tore it up so. but you want to know what really has some battle scars from crew is the car <laughs> oh, yeah. because <clears throat> the car like if he's in a car <clears throat> excuse me that's where we'll that's where we'll see like a lot of cows on the road or other animals and stuff like that so the back seat, like the armrests and stuff like that, are tore up. Mm -hmm. By the windows. By the windows. And the vents for the car. I mean, one time he literally jumped into the front seat and started chewing the dashboard to get out like a dog <laughs> in front of him or something like that. Started gnawing on the dashboard. <sighs> the key will never be the same. 
There's no sell on that one, is there? Oh, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Oh, sorry to hear about that, Carrie. Hmm. Um, JCDC and the AZ, what's up? Hi. How's it going? Mari's Vegetable Garden, hello. Uh, yeah, so we've been cobbing. How long have we been cobbing now? Forever? Seems like it. <laughs> uh oh man are we saying like it it seems like more work than the earth bags yeah i am exhausted after that first day of cobbing i was tired and today is no different i don't why i don't know it's i mean it seems like it would be less work right the cobbing than like laying the bags but it was it's tiring work mm -hmm. i mean uh <clears throat> Yesterday, I was probably shoveling for close to like 12 hours. Today, not quite as long, but it's a lot of shoveling. Mm -hmm. And granted, I love my shoveling. <laughs> but uh, we, we cobbed the lower two courses of the earth bag dome and part of the hallway. So it was quite a bit. Yeah, I, we were saying, like, can you imagine, like, covering the whole thing? So we're, uh, the reason we're doing that is to protect the bags from the the sunlight. Um, so we're going to be applying cob kind of as we're building, as we go up. So, yeah, just uh, doing a couple of courses, that was a lot of work. I couldn't imagine trying to do like 40 in one shot. Uh-oh. Mama's here. Mom and Dwayne. Oh, hey. Hey, guys. Hello. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, so <clears throat> one of the things that we wanted to do uh, Tony asks, uh, are you cobbling, cobbing as you go? And yeah, we want to keep the light off of these bags. I don't know how much, how long this whole process of building the dome is going to take. So, I mean, if it takes two months, maybe two, three months to do this, we don't want uh, the light, the UV damage, tearing those bags apart, deteriorating those bags, especially the ones on the bottom. So we figure best to get some cob over it, and that way it should be good. It should hold up. And I think that we will, um, and that's probably kind of the way we're going to work it. So we'll we'll probably do a couple more courses, then come back, cob a couple more courses, do another couple courses, and we'll do that all the way up. Would love to know what your plans are for the garden as you come into spring. I don't know. I guess it depends on where we are with the, the house build. I think it's probably going to be taking most of our time. So I have I have some perennial things in our, our tiny garden right now. So I'll probably just keep things going in that space and not worry about expanding quite yet. But, but, uh, but we'll be growing forward, you know, and he's got some seed started and everything like that. Yeah, well, I'd like to get some things started, at least. Um, so we'll be growing a bit, but not not as much as we'd like to yet. Mm -hmm. We have big plans for that uh, after the house. I think that's when we'll be kicking into overdrive. But there's some other things I'd like to do. I think my voice is like... Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I'll try and speak up, but my, my voice doesn't seem, uh, maybe it's been uh, talking in front of the camera all day. <laughs> um, but we'll definitely kick the growing into overdrive 
after the build, but I'd like to start planning, planning and planting some trees. Maybe we can get something like that going this year. We'll see. See the whole truth is, are you using the mixer for the copy? Yeah, I was just, I just saw that. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah, the mixer has just been a boon for that, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. Uh, I think that's just saving a lot more. I think we'd be way more tired uh, if we weren't using the uh, the mixer. I think traditionally they make big batches and just like stomp on them, right? Yeah. Is that what you'd like to do sometime? Uh, would you give that a shot? You'd give it a shot. I would. I think yeah. you'd enjoy that. It'd be fun. Uh, do you have to do any water treatment for your water? Do you have to do any treatment for your water storage? Uh, typically, we do not. We don't. We have the Berkey. And that's kind of all the filter that filtering that we've been doing. But um, it's all kind of what you're comfortable with. Uh, if you want, you got to do the right practices in harvesting the water. If you keep the sun out, you keep any contaminants out. Uh, you're going to have some really good water. Yeah, so we have kind of like uh, screens over where the, the water goes in from the gutters and stuff. And then we keep all light out of the cistern and the our storage tanks. Make sure to angle those pipes at 90 degrees so light can't get in. Yeah, but you did get a filter for the hose that we use to put water into our oh, trailer. Oh yeah, that's another filter that we added on there. Just another little filter to uh, before the water goes into the trailer. Just a little extra precaution, why not? And we might have a little bit more of a robust filtration system on the house where we'll get to do the house. Oh, good question from Ralph. Uh, why are you using bigger bags on the outside? So we are using bigger bags than we were using for the underground parts. Mm -hmm. um, and that is because we're building a dome. And I think there's actually, there's a certain ratio of the width of your walls to the, the height, right? Or the diameter? The diameter. So since we're going, since it's like kind of one of the largest domes you can build, 20 foot interior diameter, uh, you need at least, you, all, you almost need bags that are almost two feet wide for that base. Mm -hmm. And we're probably going to use these bags as high up as we can go. We have two bundles of these larger bags. So we'll probably use one as many bags as we can from this one bundle. Yeah. And then we'll switch to the smaller bags after that. And then we'll use the other bundle for the East Dome. Yeah, because we, we should be able to use the smaller bags like higher up. Yep. And have to support as much weight. Why did you settle an earth bag over straw bale or the earth ship model? Okay. You guys, you can start oh, it out. Okay. Well, part of it was our budget. Uh, it is pretty low cost, and so compared to straw bales, um, I think, especially around here, it's a little difficult for us to get a hold of straw bales um, where we are, and you really have to get like high quality straw bales for if you're going to be living inside there. You know don't want anything like moldy or something. Um, so that's a little more cost. Um, and I think we kind of like that uh, we have the soil that's good for building with that type of build. Mm -hmm. So we can just use what we have right here on our land we don't have to buy things or ship things in. You know, we just had to get the bags and using some barbed wire. using that material, most of the material right from our own land. Um, and like one reason, like then there's tires. We can utilize that too, uh, which I think is great. It's a great technique. 
Uh, tires are a lot of work, definitely, because you got to get that dirt, like, yep, not only it. in there, not only pack yeah. it in there, but you got to get it up and underneath the tire. So that's a little bit of a challenge. Uh, plus, there's the off gassing that you got to deal with. Um, I think personally, you would like to keep kind of like fumes down, keep those chemicals kind of out of the living. Yeah, I was a little concerned about that, but I think we are going to incorporate uh, some like recycled or repurposed materials in our build too. So we're not just using earth bags, we're using some different techniques. So like the cob and um, we're talking about possibly bottles and things. So so it, it, it's very close actually to kind of the concept of earth ships. And man, but we still might be incorporating straw bale into our build. So I really think that the way we might use the straw bale, kind of the best of both worlds. Because with the straw bale, you gotta keep you gotta keep them dry, right. keep them off the ground. So and if something happens to it, you know, then you I mean that's the wall of your your house. Yeah. But uh, here we'll be building the earth bag structure and we'll be layering the earth bags outside of that. So if something were to happen to the bales, goes bad or something like that, just pull it out, put another one in, boom. Good to go. Jeff asks, what is your cob mix? So we just use <laughs> uh, soil again, right? From here we got a lot of clay in our soil so it's really good for a cob and then we just uh, add some straw in there honestly um, yeah i think some people have to worry about uh their cob mix maybe adding a little bit more sand in there or <clears throat> we'll get putting some clay or something like that but i just, just put some water in add the dirt till it thickens up and then the straw and then we're good to go mm -hmm. so that's uh <coughs> That's really been, uh, it's apparently been pretty easy as far as that goes. Really apologize about my voice tonight. I don't know, I don't know what's going on. Drink some tea. Drink some tea. Jim, have you decided on any species of trees to plant? <clears throat> I'm gonna be doing a, I'm gonna be doing a deep dive on, on some more trees. But I think I really want to go with uh, starting out with a good selection of native drought tolerant species, especially before we start getting any fruit trees in. But I think there's a, a really good selection of trees that we can plant, drought tolerant, good for this area. And not only that, but it can produce edible pods or whatnot, like mesquite trees, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could take those pods, process them, and it's food. And then um, once we get a good selection of trees going, then we could maybe kind of alter that, move that in toward uh, maybe more, add some more fruit trees and stuff like that once we get, start getting a canopy grow going. And uh, uh, nitrogen fixing. You know, if you want to start a food forest, you got to get some nitrogen fixing things, species in there. And in fact, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you want to have like almost nine nitrogen fixing species to every fruit tree. It seems like a lot. It seems like a lot. <laughs> it's but not, uh, not your typical orchard. Not your typical orchard, definitely, um, definitely getting that biodiversity in there, but that's so important. Uh, North Star Prep Stutter, hello, I seen you in there. Uh, Arizona Homestead Project, what's up, Warren? DC Strings One says, hey guys, I really love the show. Uh, question, were you guys planning on doing like a shop or other building areas. You gonna have like a, a workshop? Mm, for sure. 
Wait, wait, wait what's the question again? <laughs> You're gonna have like a workshop for for building things. That would be nice. I would like a workshop. Something that's not outside. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's definitely been some challenges with trying to build things outside. Nothing's, everything's slanted and tilted. You don't have that nice mm. level working area. But I kind of like building things outside. <laughs> Leave me alone, Pam. I've been uh, I've been working hard all day. <laughs> Jojo, hello. Oh, you lick my hair now. <laughs> I had to do that with uh, doing the cob because my hair was falling in the mud. Uh, Richard asks. Richard has a good question. <clears throat> I should talk a little bit about that. Um, yeah, I'm still smashing out these gutters, still tearing them down, breaking them apart, tearing them down. But uh, we're probably going to go back to aluminum because we already have aluminum gutters. We already have them. <laughs> uh, so I'll probably put those back in place. But I got a plan on how to redo it. Uh, I think it'll. Uh, I think it'll work out a lot nicer this time. Sometimes my plans don't work out, but sometimes they do. Wayne says, living way out there in the desert, I would be concerned about the time it would take for emergency services to reach you. Yeah, that is that is a concern. Yeah. Oh, we just saw uh, oh. some emergency vehicles come right down our road the other day. It's, that was pretty wild. Uh, that's the first time we've seen that. Cause yeah, there was an ambulance that went down the road. And the sheriff. And the sheriff. And <clears throat> I don't know what was going on. I've never seen anything like that before. So I know that, I mean, that's kind of unusual. I mean, an ambulance just isn't going to make their way down there, all the way down there for nothing. So I hope everything is okay. Unfortunately, uh, we don't know our no neighbors well enough to uh, to know what might have been going on down that way. Uh, we're, I think the nearest, like, fire department is, what, maybe not too far, five or ten minutes away. Uh, is it, or is it 15? Is it El Frida? Yeah, it's probably. Maybe about 15. 15. But I guess if you put your pedal to the metal, maybe, yeah. like, if they, you know. This time it's going to work. That's right, Pam. Oh no, Warren, that's okay. Um you can you can hang on to those. <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna snatch them back from you. <laughs> I need them gunners back, Warren. <laughs> Arizona Urban Farmer, what's up? Cat asked, uh, how's mom doing? Hopefully Ooh. she continues to recover. Yeah, uh <clears throat> What's a really a shame is wherever the facility that she's in now. Um, so it's like like a post-acute care and rehab center. Yeah, it's really, really kind of a shame. Like uh, we used to be able to do video calls with her every day. This place, they say like once a week for 15 minutes or something like that. And weird and i still haven't got any updates uh my brother usually been getting the um updates about how well she's doing and everything like that but i don't think they've been as good with the contact so it's kind of weird mm. <clears throat> well, hopefully that means she's doing good i think she's doing well uh, i still have to contact my brother to see if he's heard anything because i haven't heard from him in a while but i mean every day we've talked to her up until she got to this new facility. I mean, she's been getting better and stronger all the time. So I think she's on the road to recovery. She just needs to keep building up that strength. And I think she'll be out of there in no time. I mean, she's not sick anymore. Uh, <clears throat> but I think uh, like her voice is coming back, but she still really couldn't talk the last time we talked to her. 
So she definitely needs to strengthen out those voice muscles and mm -hmm. be able to eat some real food. Oh, yeah. Medlife prices. Hello. <laughs> Smoking Fox says, I heard crew asked Santa for snow. Must have been on the good list. Well, he loves snow. <laughs> he loves it for a little bit, but then he like, I think he had enough. Did so? he like, he was out there for a little bit. Got to sit his butt inside the snow and then uh, he got kind of playful yeah no throwing snowballs <laughs> and oh. then he wanted to walk around and explore in the snow and i think we both kind of walked him for a while and he didn't want to come back inside huh no now when i was walking him oh. i was like well i gotta come in my feet are freezing <laughs> <laughs> You did see him. We did. We did see him uh, to get pretty cozy once he did get inside. Yeah. The... In all those rocks, did you ever find anything interesting from a rock hounding viewpoint? Uh, nothing like nothing crazy. Like, well, I, one I probably don't know enough about rocks. Yeah. To know, like, oh, wow, look at this. This is, like, I'm just like, ooh, look at this green rock. <laughs> so there's all different colors of rocks out here. Yeah, I mean, the, the beautiful. Co rock colors are incredible. I don't know what they are, but they're beautiful. I did find a rock one time that looked like a steak. <laughs> okay. Maybe I was just hungry at the time. I don't know. <laughs> You thought about doing any outbuildings with Adobe Brick? Uh, I think um, that might be cool to uh, try. Yeah, I, I, there's definitely a lot of techniques I would like to try, and uh, that's that's probably one of them. I think we're going to be building a lot of stuff out here, so there's definitely going to be a lot of opportunities to play around with different techniques. I'd like to give that a shot. Yeah, um, I definitely, uh, Lynette says you cause be causing some trouble to uh, get access. And I, th I think I agree. I think she has her iPad now, too, but I haven't heard anything about her trying to contact anyone with her iPad. Mm -hmm. But uh, I want to get in contact with my brother probably after the live and find out what he and if any new news. Yeah. Have you thought about using RAM to Earth? Oh, yeah. We're, uh, that's definitely one we're going to try and utilize. Very similar to the Earth bag. But um, one reason, like, I don't think we're fully got, got into the, like, the RAM to Earth is because you just need to get a bunch of supplies. You know, you need four, like, plywood for forms. You need clamps to keep everything in place. I think I'll probably end up working with, uh, if we do do a Rammed Earth project, probably get a hold of our friend Ray Clammons. He has all the stuff. There. He has all the <laughs> stuff. Uh, so if I have to find out what, uh, maybe what he charged for a project and then maybe do something. I really like, I really like uh, Handyman's uh, Rammed Earth Fire Pit. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's something we maybe we could try and yeah, emulate over Yeah, we got to there. work on that. We got to work uh -huh. on that. How are you going to keep the dome from caving in on itself? If we do it right, uh, it should be self-supporting. Yep. You know, uh, it's just comes in every so ever so slightly as you go up. And then the higher you get, the, it starts to get a little steeper. So, you know, you build it right and it should be completely self-supporting. Yes. So it's kind of, it works the same way that an arch does. So if you see like a stone archway, like all the pieces uh, kind of support each other. So it's like that except like 360 degrees. So yeah, and there's, um, it's called a corbel dome. And you can see examples of that if you look at um, things from Cal Earth. They've done a lot of domes, I think. Um, a lot of places around the world. Mm -hmm. Done that, yeah. 
do you guys plan to use for your heat source? I would like to build a rocket mass heater. That'd be sweet. Mm -hmm. I honestly think, I think personally that if we, uh, this might be colder in the winter than it is hot in the summer. What do you think? I think, well, shouldn't it be kind of stable temperatures all year? It should be. But, you know, uh, we get those long stretches of heat in the summer, cold in the winter. And I think it'll be a little colder in the winter than I think it'll be nice with the summer. It'll be a lot cooler on the inside. I don't think that's going to be as big of an issue. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I mean, that'd be cool, like, if we didn't really need any uh heat heating or cool but we'll see we'll see different says i know you don't have a lot of trees out there but cordwood construction looks really cool to us i think it does too. oh yeah i absolutely. wish we <laughs> had the wood for that i would definitely do that Yeah, I just want to uh, take a moment here, give a little shout out to 13 Moons Homestead, one of our moderators over there. She's very close now to 1,000 subscribers. She's working very hard on our content lady. Content lately, those uh, videos have just been phenomenal. So 13 Moons Homestead, pop that up there. Go check out some of her videos. You like what she's doing over there subscribe we love Lynette <laughs> <laughs> always does an amazing job very close to 1,000 subscribers let's see what we can do about getting her there <laughs> <laughs> oh I see a super chat from Jeff Green Jeff Green thank you yeah, very much for so that much. very generous is that it is it's our little poop emoji. Jeffrey says the, the steak rack is usually a rack called horns blend. It's often described as looking like steak. There you go. Are you going to put heated floors in? No heated floors. Um, really, we'll probably have, uh, it'll probably just be earthen floors. So I think like you can use, uh, if you have the right like lighting, you could probably collect some uh, passive solar to heat up the floors in the winter, mm. depending on how you do that. But other than any kind of natural light, natural heating. Uh, that might be good for uh, earthen floors, like the passive solar. Yeah. And that would work really well for that. The, the earthen floors we're doing will probably be insulated. So uh, we've been just kind of discussing how we're doing that right now. We're laying down gravel for like a subfloor. And then you put a uh, straw on top of that and then like a straw rich adobe over that and then whatever you're gonna finish it with. So it ends up being kind of insulated. Hobby tractor with a bucket soon or is it all by hand? All by hand right now. Maybe someday in the future we can do that. Uh, did we get any 13 moons links in there? Can you throw a link in there? Can you do a link? Throw a link in there. <laughs> Midlife prices. We're hoping to get passive heating, cooling with earthen floors and adobe walls. Yeah, I think more you can do it passively, the better. Yeah. Uh, Less work, you know, less uh, less trouble, 
of having to go through and set something up. But I think we're going to have a rocket mass heater just in case. Maybe on those really cold winters. How do you manage ventilation? We'll have, uh, we'll definitely, we're going to be building the dome with various pipes and stuff like that, vents and stuff like that. So I think we'll have a lot of ventilation, airflow going through there. Finally off grid. Sorry I'm late. How is your mom? Uh, I haven't had an update for a little while, but uh, yeah, she's still on the road to recovery. I think she's doing real well. Probably going to talk to my brother. Probably going to send him a text afterwards, find out if he's heard anything. I haven't heard anything in the past few days. We'll find out what's going on. But uh, she's been getting stronger every day. Junior P says, I'm late again, was making barbecue ribs. Well, Junior's here, time to start everything over. <laughs> yeah, I'm really curious, like, how the house is going to be, you know, in the temperature extremes, like, it's going to be like in the summer and winter mm -hmm. i don't i don't know how much heating or cooling we'll even need hoping hoping we can do uh without quite a bit uh will there be any windows in the dome oh yeah we'll have uh one main window on each dome and then the other part of our light will come from bottle windows is that accurate? Yeah. <laughs> She's got all the plans. So one main window on the south side and then various bottle windows throughout. So we'll see how that works. David the Good, hello. Hey. Welcome. Love bottle windows. Uh, we do too. I think this type of construction, uh, it's so amazing to do with this type of construction and the different types of lights you can get in there. It's pretty amazing. Uh, you're looking, <clears throat> are you looking for different colors or mainly like clear bottles? Uh, whatever, <laughs> Whatever we have, we have a <laughs> <laughs> whatever we can get. We have a small collection going of some different colors. Right now we have some clear ones, we have some green ones, we have some blue ones. Mm -hmm. I think we might have some brown. Yeah, and yeah, that's the one thing I love about like earthen building, natural building, is that <clears throat> You can really personalize the kind of construction style a bit, kind of make it how you want to make it. It's all, it's, can leave it a little bit more up to the imagination and it's got that organic feel to it. Mm -hmm. Elaine says, I watch your old videos and they're great. Do you still have your shipping container? Yes, we do. Yep, and eventually that is. Well, do you think we'll be using that for anything for other than storage, or will it be kind of just storage? Probably storage. At one time, you were thinking you might set up a workshop in there, but it yeah. might not be a great place for that now. Yeah, you know, once a lot of the uh, stuff in there gets cleared out, um, all the household items and stuff like that, all that gets moved out. I think it'd be a great place to, for a uh, storage, like wood storage or something like that. Things that you might want to keep out of the rain. Materials, like a material storage. Yeah. Put in some racks and stuff like that. Different says, I'm really considering building a <laughs> shipping container workshop. Yeah. 
uh, a lot of possibilities with it. Or, you know, maybe part of it's storage, maybe part of it's a workshop. But I guess uh, we would need electricity in there. And, well, I could maybe set up its own little, like, like solar station or mm -hmm. something like that. That's a possibility. Oh, now I'm thinking. Now I'm thinking. Now I'm thinking. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah. Now the material the bags are made of is UV sensitive. How long before you get the cob on the outside? So we're trying. We're trying to get the bags covered. Like we don't want to wait too long. So like probably less than a month of time. Uh, right. Yeah, we've had our the bags exposed for how? What's the longest we've had them exposed for? Maybe a couple of months. Yeah. And I haven't noticed really any deterioration, right? I mean, you could probably leave it for a few months before starting to see any degradation. But me personally, I would say cover it up as quickly as you can. Yeah. To well, prevent any of that UV damage and weakening and stuff like that. Especially here, you know, the UV yeah. light is pretty intense. So, yeah, we're trying to protect it as much as we can. Norm says, how is your cistern doing? It's doing real well. Um, you know, I was a little worried. <laughs> I was a little worried about the roof. Uh, with the gutters coming down, I really wanted to get that downspout off of there because it was so heavy and I didn't want it to come crashing down on top of the roof cistern. But I mean, that, that downspout gutter was a lot of weight <laughs> yeah. on the roof of that cistern. And that's pretty, that roof pretty is pretty strong. strong. That roof is pretty strong. <laughs> Junior asked that I miss crew. We did do a little crew cam no, 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 earlier. But now he's on the floor. We did a little, little crew cam earlier. And now he's passed out on the ground. <clears throat> How full is it? Uh, probably not. I haven't checked in a little while, but I can't, I can't imagine there being too much water. I'll probably have a look soon, but hopefully maybe it'll be covering the bottom. What do you think? What's your bet? Do you think it'll completely covering the bottom yet or no? I think so. Ooh. Here. It won't be a next video though. Maybe we'll put it in the, the video after that. Maybe something about that in Tuesday's video. Maybe we'll take a peek. Sneak peek. <coughs> Excuse me. Jeff. Yeah, thank you. You two are inspiring. Inspiring. <laughs> Greetings from Branson, Missouri. Well, thank you so much, Jeff. <clears throat> really sorry about this, everyone. I don't know where this came from. You know, actually, I got kind of, uh, I got a, like a little sick earlier today. Just like a little nauseous mm. after lunch. I'm sorry. I made lunch. <laughs> It's all her fault. <laughs> uh, but then I went away in a few hours. It was difficult trying to get out there and mix cob and stuff like that. And I was kind of like, ugh. Mm. wasn't feeling it in the stomach, but that's kind of gone away. But now, now something's happening with my voice. <clears throat> Mary, hello. Nausea is a warning sign. Oh, hope not. Hope. <laughs> hope it's not something worse. Hello from Georgia. You two are the hardest workers on YouTube. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> Man, uh, I'll tell you, I don't know about the hardest workers, but these last couple of days were exhausting. <sighs> How'd you hold up to uh, all that cabin? Okay. Um, she's tough, tougher than I am. I think it was a little hard just cause I was like hunched over, you know, cabbing the, the lower part right down by the ground. Mm -hmm. So my back's a little sore, but it's not too bad now. 
<laughs> I'm pregnant. Ah! Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Pam says, okay, that is too weird because she was nauseous today too. Mm. Whoa. Oh. Sympathy nausea. <laughs> you both make my lockdown more enjoyable. Well, thank you. Oh, cool. <laughs> we try. We try to be a little bit entertaining on our videos, try and have some fun. I think that is one of the big takeaways from making our videos is just, I like to just go out there and have fun, you know? I don't want making videos for YouTube to be a chore, you know? I want it to be fun, you know, we'll learn some things along the way, learn how not to do some things along the way. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just have fun with it, right? Yeah. You have fun making videos? I do. Nice. Vincent says, I've had a little tickle in my lungs and a little blood in my snot since my visit, all that dust. Oh, yeah, you know what? Yeah, if you haven't been, if you're not used to that dry desert air, I think it takes some getting used to. Mm -hmm. I think when we first got to Arizona, I was having frequent nosebleeds quite a bit, haven't I think so. I think we had to get like a humidifier for a while. And uh, didn't your brother have issues with that a little bit? With the dry air? I don't remember. Okay, maybe. Well, I did. Did you? Uh, Yeah, for a little bit. But I think we kind of adjusted. Pam says, y'all are inspiring. Always have fun. Always have fun. I think that's that's part of the whole thing of doing this, right? Not necessarily having to do that nine to five, build a more sustainable life and have fun doing it. You know, have fun building together, working together. It's uh, It's a dream come true. Is it a dream come true for you spending so much time with me? <laughs> or do you want me to get a job again? <laughs> Go get a job. <laughs> drink a lot of water. Yeah, I was trying to drink a lot of water today. Get some extra water in there. <laughs> Did it hurt when you got hit by the measuring tape? <laughs> Not so much hurt, but uh, I was a little shocked. All of a sudden, I was just like talking, and then the tape whips her out. Ah! Which I'm sure was completely by accident. Yes, of course. <laughs> Robin says, I have this weekend off, been working a lot of overtime for a long time. Hopefully we can work on the next section of the Ram Earth Lawn Saturday. Well, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you get to do that. That's uh, Putting in all that overtime and then uh, start working on the round earth wall, but sometimes that's the way you got to do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad you'll have some time off. Are you going to put stucco on the outside of the dome when you get through? Yeah, I think uh, we'll be doing like a an earthen rendering render, uh, maybe with lime for some like weather resistance. Mm -hmm. Difference says it's been hard for us trying to stay positive lately, but we're trying. Well, yeah, sorry to hear that. No, it's not always easy. Uh, staying in that positive frame of mind, and I think both of us have that tendency to kind of lose that positive edge from time to time. But usually, it's not both of us at the same yeah. time. Yeah, I think you're more optimistic than I am, though. <laughs> I try. Uh, how I, how I, I don't know how I didn't just like when those gutters came down, just dig a hole and crawl into <laughs> it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I tried to stay lighthearted even with that. Yeah. Uh, it's heartbreaking, but yeah, it's uh, about helping each other. I think pulling each other out from those uh, times where it gets tough. Yeah. So I'm glad I have this lady by my side. She's always helping me out. Well, I'm glad I have you. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you keep me going. 
you could use the old concrete to fill something. And that's probably it's probably what's gonna end up being use it for fill or, or something like that. going to do a skylight at the top of your dome. We've been talking about that. <clears throat> and you're, you're thinking you're probably not, right? Probably not. I know they have done that at this place, Ransom Ranch, near where we are. But you have other plans for the top. Probably we'll probably do a uh, solar chimney. It'd probably be more for ventilation than lighting, right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, a skylight would be pretty cool. Be like awesome, like to have Can the light coming straight down. Or something like that. Yeah. Let's get the top of that. But I, I'm a little, what? <laughs> I'm a little worried about you know, like the summer sun coming right overhead, and you know, will that heat things up too much? I don't know. So uh, maybe it would be better to have like ventilation for more cooling in that area i think ventilation is going to be the key in getting that um air moving <laughs> through there so you're kind of airing on the side of having less light inside there but having keeping that thermal mass and keeping those earthen walls intact right yeah might have to sacrifice a little you're worried light. a little bit more with like keeping things cool than let's say heating things up right yeah i think fighting that desert sun is definitely going to be a challenge mm -hmm. yeah because i mean it's definitely hotter here than it is colder mm -hmm. Dr. Gunsmith says, I've been trying to get all my English folks to join your channel. Love you guys. Oh, thank <laughs> well, thank you. We appreciate that effort. Are you guys getting the crazy winds today? <laughs> yeah, it, it did get pretty windy this afternoon. Camera fell down again. Yes. I knew when there was a, this is Gus coming. And I it knew coming. it. I, I knew it was coming. And I was like, Jess. And then she was looking at me like, what? And then, like, the, the camera late. goes out, it was too late. I was like, ah! Luckily, it fell onto a nice soft bed of rocks. <laughs> like totally questioned a, it. Totally it questioned it. It was right next to this pile of big rocks. But I think it's okay. Uh, Simply Pam asks, how many eggs do you get from your chickens? Uh, well, lately, I've been getting... Two to four eggs a day. Yeah, it's picking up. Nice. They're really cranking out the eggs, huh? But they're all bantam chickens, <laughs> so they're small eggs. <laughs> Those are tiny little eggs. <laughs> Vincent asks, would wind turbines, wind power be worth doing? Um, Possibly. You know, uh, I guess everyone's preference will be different for me i guess i prefer the solar because it's a little bit more reliable than wind and then i think once you make that investment you know it might be just good to go down one of those roads but um it's a possibility of to add something down the road you never know but i like solar i think it's a little bit more reliable uh just for our where we live just yeah because i mean especially get, in arizona we get so many sunny days here yeah like i said uh i think if you're going like if i think if you invest in solar sometimes it might be better just to stick with the one rather than trying to do both but i'm not going to dissuade anyone from uh trying to do both but it would be probably definitely add to the cost but if you got the extra money and you wanna, or if you big, if you're good enough to build something, yeah, I'd never dissuade anyone from doing both. I mean, we definitely get a lot of wind in this area. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you from originally? We're both 
we were both born and raised in Wisconsin, mm-hmm. uh, near Lake Michigan. Wisconsin, born and raised. Wisconsin. But we lived in uh, central Arizona for almost the better part of a decade. So ten, over 10 years now in here in Arizona. Yep. What's the average humidity level here? Uh, I don't know what the average is. Hmm. Not a lot. <laughs> For the most part, there isn't a whole lot of, um, you know, atmospheric humidity. Uh, sometimes <clears throat> during the uh, monsoon season, it can get kind of a little hum- more humid. But it's also usually cloudier and cooler. So for me, the the humidity in the summer really hasn't been too bad. Although I have heard people in the in the city, in the nearby city, complain about it. Really? Yeah. Like, oh, the monsoon humidity. But I don't know, maybe living in Wisconsin, maybe it's just one of those <laughs> things where like this is nothing. <laughs> like yeah. if you if you've been in the summers in Wisconsin, uh, close to uh, Lake Michigan, you know humidity. <laughs> Different asked, are there any other states that you would love to live in? You know, uh, that's such a tricky question. I think there are so many beautiful places around the country. You know, each place has its own particular beauty. Each place has its own particular positive um, aspects. You know, Wisconsin, especially where we lived, I mean, it was so so beautiful with all the trees and all the lush grass and everything like that. Um, Yeah, I mean, would it be nice to maybe be in a climate where we get more, a little bit more rain? It might be nice. But then uh, the solar might be trickier. Mm -hmm. But, uh, But we really kind of enjoy the desert. We kind of fell in love with that. And plus you need the heat, right? Probably deal with the heat a little better than the cold. <laughs> Do you have to worry about your dogs eating desert toes? Um, the crew would not eat a desert toad. He might get curious. About what it is but i don't think he would eat it you don't think so no i've 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 seen him well for the most part unless they move he doesn't even notice them like sometimes i once i kind of pointed it out and kind of looked at it kind of curious but it didn't really interest him too much mm-hmm. well the ones we have here i think we do have some of those like the poison ones um, but most of them are those little green toads. I don't think those are poisonous. Mm-hmm. Jeffrey Payne, have a good night. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for uh, being here. Have you guys watched Jake Mace old desert garden videos? Could be, a... yeah, uh, yeah. We're we're big fans of Jace, especially when he lived. Jace. Jace. Jake. <laughs> Jake Mace. <laughs> Jake Mace, when he was uh, living in uh, Central Arizona, we got to visit uh, his uh, place up there, got a little tour of that. Um, yeah, it's pretty exciting, the Longevity Gardens, right? Yeah. Okay, it's enough about Jace Make. Jace Make. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know what's going on with me today. I'm sorry. I apologize, everyone. <laughs> uh, so we're getting down to the end, everyone. Uh, is there a last question you want to get to? How far are you from the nearest city where you buy groceries? Probably about 20 miles. 
20 miles, about a half hour trip. Uh, so everyone, thank you so much for joining us. We'll always look forward to Thursday nights, getting to spend time with you guys, getting to answer some of those questions. Uh, big thank you to our moderators here in blue. Definitely check out 13 Moons Homestead. So close to 1,000 subscribers. Let's help her get a little closer to that tonight. <laughs> uh, thanks so much, everyone, for joining us. Don't forget, new video comes out Saturday. Looking forward to sharing that with you. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.